welcome back to my channel and today we are talking about fetus cletus mckay he was born september 15 1890 in clarendon parish jamaica he was the youngest son of thomas francis mckay and hannah ann beth edwards his family was respected members of the baptist faith in 1907 claude met walter jekyll a philosopher and folklorist who encouraged him and inspired him to focus on his writing. Claude was also influenced by his older brother Uriah Theodore, also known as Theo. Claude became an avid reader of British literature, philosophy, science, theology, and Shakespeare. He began writing poetry at the age of 10. Walter helped him publish his very first book of poems called Songs of Jamaica in 1912 which was published in Jamaican Patois. Later that year, Claude left Jamaica to attend Tuskegee Institution, which is known today as Tuskegee University. He was shocked by the intense racism at that time when he first got to South Carolina, as most public places at that time were segregated. These racist experiences inspired him to write more poetry while at Tuskegee, but he quickly left to study at the Kansas State Agricultural College. While attending college there, he read W.E.B. Du Bois, A Soul of Black Folks, and this had major influence on his political involvement. With that, in 1914, he decided to move to New York City. In 1917, he published two sonnets, The Harlem Dancer and The Invocation, and later he would begin to write about social and political concerns from his perspectives as a black man in America. McKay stayed connected to his roots and continued to write about his homeland, Jamaica. During the 1920s, McKay developed an interest in communism and traveled to Russia and Jamaica. But in 1934, McKay moved back to Harlem, New York, as he lost his faith in communism. He later turned his attention to various spiritual and political leaders in Harlem before converting to Catholicism. Today, we look back at his life with respect as his viewpoints and poetic achievements in the early 1920s helped set the tone for the Harlem Renaissance and gained respect of young black poets of that time, including Langston Hughes. Sadly, McKay died on May 22nd, 19. 48. So with that being said, you guys, as we look back on his life and all of his achievements that he had in influencing the Harlem Renaissance, I would like for you guys to subscribe and like my video so that we can continue looking at our ancestors and who they were and delving into their history. And thank you for listening to this very short and brief synopsis of Claude that makes me a poet among colored Americans. If we must die, let it not be like hogs, hunted and penned in an inglorious pot, while round us bark the mad and hungry dogs, making their mock at our accursed lot. If we must die, oh, let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us though dead. O oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. Though far outnumbered, let us show us brave, and for their thousand blows deal one death blow. What though before us lies the open grave? Like men, we'll face the murderous, cowardly pack pressed to the wall, dying but fighting back.